Thanks for tuning in to In The End, We Win With Curtis. My name is Curtis Austin, and I will be your host for the next hour and every Monday going forward. Thank you, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my plan for the show tonight is to just chit-chat with a great friend of mine. We're going to talk about some awesome things that he's done in his past and some things that he's doing uh, to assist the youth in our community. Uh, my goal for the show each and every Monday is to deliver empowering information that will enlighten, enrich, and inform. So with that being said, let me uh, let you know that we are an interactive show, so I am encouraging all of my listeners to call in. The phone number to call in is 240-719-2560. You can call in. We'll take your questions live over the air, comments, concerns, things like that. I encourage those things. Um, part, of the, part of how we can keep the show going is through your participation, including sponsorship uh, and advertisements. If anyone out there chooses to advertise with us, you can email me at we win. I'm, I'm, I apologize, winwithcurtis at gmail.com. And then you can also call into the show while I'm here at 240-719-2560. Uh, one of our sponsors is Star Imports, and I just want to uh, say a little bit about them. They are, a, they are the home of the boutique-style buying experience. Star Imports, Adele Motors, has 50 years in the automotive industry. Star Imports is in Camp Springs right off of Branch Avenue behind the Red Lobster. Uh, they provide the personal attention you deserve and treat you with utmost respect in your car buying experience. Bad credit, no problem. We have credit restoration programs to help you. Credit applications on www.starimports.com. Star Imports does bank, in-house financing, and buy here, pay here. The vehicle you want, if, if the vehicle that you want is not in the inventory, no problem. They'll go out and get it to your specification. So. Um, once again, thanks for tuning in. We're going to have a great time this evening. I have, a, once again, a good friend of mine, uh, Marco Price Bay. And welcome, sir. Hey, it's a <laughs> pleasure being here. It's a pleasure being here. And congratulations to you kicking thank off you, man. You know, thank this you. new segment of the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. and and, thank you. And this is the first. You're my first uh, 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 interviewee. Mm -hmm. Look, they're calling already. Interesting. Uh, you're my first interviewee, man, so I really appreciate it. Right. Um, I, I really wanted to capture uh, your story. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have the book, you and your dad, you're a co-author of the book. So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit, Marco, about mm -hmm. uh, how it was for you when you were... Good evening. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Well, I'm going to try anyway. My name is Talisa Jackson. Talisa. I'm calling in for Mr. Bay, Marco Bay Price. Okay. Just want, just want to say about that great man, that brother right there, always positive, always reaching back to the young, and just a heart of gold, and don't mind support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teresa. Hello? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. She said, he said, Marco, uh, he said cut your radio down. I'm proud of you, God, brother. Thank you. It's you know, been a long time coming. You've spoken into my spirit years ago. Thanks to you for my nonprofit speaking in into existence. And now I'm an author slash notary. So... I, I look up to you, bro. I'll keep up the good work. Love you. Love you too. Salute to you. Thank you so All much right. for tuning in. Thanks. Thanks for calling See in, you Teresa. Soon. Thank you. So, Marco, I just want to jump back to you and and get your um, uh, perspective of how it was for you growing up without your dad. <clears throat> well, my father was incarcerated when I was born. My father, Eugene Brown. He was pretty much in and out of penitentiary my whole life. Mm. And so my grandmother, which is my father's mother, and my grandfather, they raised me. Okay. So coming up without my father, it was pretty, at one time, 
I didn't really realize the absence because the support that I had. But once I got it up into my teens, I started feeling it. Okay. And I'm saying that to say that the absence of my father, I feel like I had to be my own man. Okay. And in retrospect, when I look back and I think about it, I start to disconnect from my family because like out in the street, you had to be either a predator or you was prey. Mm -hmm. Coming up in Southeast wow. Washington, D.C., back then, it wasn't too much gunplay, but right. you had to know how to fight. Right, definitely. And so I learned earlier on that in order to be recognized, you had to go out there and, you know, put your work in. And <laughs> right. so that's what I did, but the absence of my father, it played on me down the line when I realized certain morals and principles and values that your father is supposed to embed and instill in you, that's right. those was missing. Mm -hmm. And so all my values came from the street. All of the values that I learned, all my principles and things that, all that came from being in that environment and Consequently, it led up to me, you know, going to juvenile institutions sure. and so forth and so on. Sure, sure. Now, um, for everyone that's looking on, um, Marco is the co-author of From Pawns to Kings with his father, Eugene Brown. So it's an awesome, it's an awesome illustration of uh, his story. Uh, this book was also put to life, brought to life through a, a movie called uh, Life of a King where Cuba Gooding Jr. played his father in the actual movie mm -hmm. and it was a depiction of uh, Marco and Mr. Brown's lives. So in the book, now I've read the book Marco, I noticed a, a few occasions where decision making and choices mm -hmm. were critical in not only yours but also in your dad's uh, uh, every day and, right. and there were many moments when uh, in the book it stated I had the choice to make right. or I made the wrong decision so do you believe that with your father being away and the fact that he was incarcerated did that play a role in your decision making and I know you mentioned a little bit about that a minute ago to a certain degree to a certain degree however it comes a time that you know you have to take responsibility and accountability you for your own actions. And so I, I I used to place the blame game when I didn't know. Right. And but once I became consciously aware of the things that I was encountering, mm -hmm. it pretty much came from those decisions and those values that I accepted and okay. believed to be true. However, you know, my decisions came because like I said, coming up with my father, my uh, father's mother and mm -hmm. and his uh, father, which is my grandfather, they pretty much embedded certain principles sure. in my life. I chose to go on the Deviate. other side sure, because mm -hmm. around uh, Southeast where my other grandmother, which is my mother's mother, you know, the environment was a little different, mm -hmm. you know. So when I went around there, it was more excitement. You know, the guys was hustling. Mm -hmm. And I seen, you know, guys riding around in BMWs and Mercedes Benzes, and those things was fascinating. I was allured mm -hmm. by the fascination of those shiny things. And so that what that's that captivated me at an early age. And so I was drawn into that. So my decision making was based on the values that I accepted. And I value, I begin to value materialistic things sure. okay. more than really I value my life. Sure. And I begin to, wow. you know, sacrifice, make those sacrifices and make those decisions to do the things that, like I said, led up into, you know, me being incarcerated. You know, it's important um, that we're, or I'm glad that we're discussing that because uh, me, I too grew up without my father. My mm -hmm. father was murdered when I was less than two years, I was younger than two years old, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, we we relate in, in that vein, but uh, year after year after year, I hear how young men are growing up without their uh, without a two parent household, mm -hmm. and 
uh, now more than ever, um, it seems like that's just the norm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, how does that, how do we overturn it? How, 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 how can we, what can we do? I, now I know that you have a, uh, a mentorship program that we're going to talk about later on right. in the show, and your dad has something that we're going to talk about later mm -hmm. on as well. But where does that come from, man? Is it, is everyone a Lord? Was everyone a Lord? You know, all of these households where the father isn't there, were all of those kids, you know, a, you know, Lord in to, because there's also a high, uh, um, rate of those same children under the age of 18 who's mm -hmm. falling victim to the penal system right. as well. Right. So is that a law really that strong or what can be done do you that you think to help curve those uh, percentage, those interest, those rates? Well, um, first and foremost, the allurement is strong because when you see children coming up without their father and mother might be on drugs and you might have three and four kids and so survival you mm -hmm. know survival of the fittest that's a law right right and, and and you gotta do things that's gonna allow you to eat definitely at the end of the day i came up when i was coming up around the inner part of southeast off of alabama avenue i used to see kids that never sit down and ate a meal, a home cooked meal, they ate from the curry out mm -hmm. every day. Every they had day. to go out there and hustle up enough money so they can feed their siblings. Wow. And 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 to see the struggle, it was real. Right. It was real. And the allurement is strong, however, there's still a choice. And I think right now today, that's why I feel so indebted and it's being my moral obligation and my social duty to give back. Wonderful. To let the youngest know that you don't have to go the same route mm -hmm. that I did. In which a lot of, I say a small percentage of children didn't go that route and they went on to get their education. Mm -hmm. And I had to learn that education was my outlet. Okay. Because after being incarcerated, that's, right. that's what pretty much freed me. That's when the light came on. Okay. You know, and I was able to see things from a different perspective. Right. And so when you only, it said you only know what you've been pretty much exposed to. And so once I was exposed to, you know, different books, different readings, certain spirituality and, and different books about psychology, as a man think of, you know, it made me aware that my actions and my character was a direct reflection of my thoughts. Sure. Okay that I had misplaced the glory, the glory and the shame had been misplaced. I glorified the things really that I should have been ashamed of. Okay. I looked at a guy that worked nine to five, you know, I looked at him like he was crazy. <laughs> and we was out there making like $1,500, $2,000 a, a, a day. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we was on a serious grind, 13, 14 years old. Right, we stayed right. up all night long. And thinking it's fun. And thinking it's fun. Right. At the same time, we was turning down our own community. Right, right. You know, so, like I said, um, your choices are based upon your values. Right. And your values are a reflection of the principles that you live by. Okay. And so if you don't have no principles, you know, it is said that how should man's actions be right when you don't have no rule over okay. your life? And so when you don't have no rule, no structure no guidelines, and then you'll do anything based on what's presented to you. Right. So this education that you speak of, where did you get that? <clears throat> Being incarcerated. Okay, and how long were you incarcerated? I was incarcerated as, as a juvenile off and on from the age of 13 uh, up until I was 17. Cedonol, Oak Hill, you know, the detention centers down low, and then I came home for a couple of years. Um, the crack epidemic was real, real strong in the early, in the mid to late 80s. Mm -hmm. That's when, um, you know, D.C. had the highest death toll mm -hmm. during that time. Murder capital. Yeah, the murder capital. And um, like I said, consequently, I ended up doing 16 years from the age of 19 all the way up to I was 35 mm -hmm. years of age. Wow. And so while incarcerated, I made a choice. I made a decision. 
I said, do I want to come out being the same person that I was before I went in, mm -hmm. or do I want to take the opportunity to make the best out of my situation and make the penitentiary become my university? Wow, okay. And so I began to read. I mean, I, I immersed myself in books. That was my escape. I recall one time when I was at a maximum security, locked down 23 hours a day, and the only outlet that I had was my ability to be able to read and comprehend and pretty much just be a sponge with all the information that I could. And I I came across this um, psychological theory it called a uh, paradigm shift. Okay. And you can mm -hmm. pretty much project your thought and visualize and see how you wanted to be. Okay. You know, regardless of what your circumstances or your situation, I was an eight by twelve. Okay. But I seen myself being successful. I seen myself coming out here, taking my place in the affairs Wonderful. of men and doing the things that I'm doing. And so Faith. while incarcerated, I got my high school diploma, I got some um college credits. I went on to get my uh, barbering, my master barber's license, brick mason, plumbing, electrician. When I went to the parole board, they said that, that I had superseded my their expectation when it came to programming. Oh, really? Because I was doing two or three things at one time. I'm a hustler. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm born a hustler. My father was a hustler. My mother was a hustler. My grandmother. And so all I knew with the mentality that I had was the hustle. Get it. Mm -hmm. And a, a old timer told me one day, he tricked me really. <laughs> he seen me walking around because down Lawton back then you could wear your own clothes. Mm -hmm. And so he seen me, he said, Young, you was a, a real hustler out there in the street. I was like, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, let me see you hustle yourself out of this penitentiary. Right. And so from that point on, that left something in my mind that I could do the same thing. Now mind you, I dropped out of school that in the 10th grade. Oh, wow, okay. But one of the things that my grandmother had embedded in me at an early age was to read, knowing how to read. So my punishment, instead of her beating me, she used to make me read books. Right, and wonderful. I used, to, I used to have to give her book reports. Wonderful. And one of the books that she gave me when I, it was a small pamphlet that she gave me when I first got incarcerated. I never forget it, it had a coffee stain on it. It was called As a Man Thinketh. Mm. That book changed my life. That was like my miniature Bible. Oh, really? Yeah. And so pretty much, you know, that's how everything unfolded, me being incarcerated. They planted me into a cell of darkness, and they mm -hmm. thought that I, I, they thought I was done. I thought I was done. But only by the grace and the mercy of God. That right. Amen. He, that's he right. seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. That's right. That's right. So, you know, as they planted me, in that cell of darkness, I begin to grow and unfold. Right. As the bud unfolds, that you the are. flower. So here I am. Awesome. So it's interesting that you mentioned that your grandmother punished you mm -hmm. and made you read that book as a man thinketh. Mm -hmm. And then later on, while you were incarcerated, you came across paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. So uh, paradigm paradigms are a train of thought, a mm -hmm. belief system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So early on, and then later on, when you've gotten into the mess. Then you run into something that's also going to talk about changing that thought process, and, and there you were. It just changed your life. And you know, it's interesting that our pastors, and I thank God for my man of God, Pastor Mike and uh, D.D. Freeman at Spirit of Faith Christian Center, he always says that life is choice-driven. You live or you die by the choices that mm. you make. And um, that sticks with me, and I mm. tell my kids all of the time, listen, just, just make sure that you make the right decision, you know. Think before you move, that's right. right? Which is which is a part of your book, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that's 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 critically important, and and part of the reason why I wanted to do this show, especially have you on, is because I think we're losing our youth um, because the recidivism rates, right, right, of those coming, you know, just going, staying in that in that pipeline. Um, because the rate of single family uh, household has skyrocketed from the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, now the level of respect from our youth is terrible, right? Um, it's, it's just, there's just got to be something. And because of what we're gonna talk about later on from what you're doing, 
um, to help in in the community, the local, you know, locally. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it would just be important to have you on because I wanted the listeners to just know <coughs> that it can be done, right? You can be incarcerated, but it's just a matter of you making the decision mm -hmm. to change, and then everything will uh, fall into place, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. So um, <coughs> now. At what point did your father come back into your life? And when he did, did you immediately embrace and accept him? Or was there a power, a, a power struggle? Because now I believe you were much older mm -hmm. when he did come back and then you had already made the decision right. to live the way you were living. Was he able to tell you, um, yo, don't do that? Mm -hmm. Um. I recall, I think I was around 15, I think I was 15, 16 years old. He had came home on a brief stay from prison. And uh, I was around my neighborhood, hustling, selling drugs. And he had came, he had walked up on me and he seen me, you know, transacting with a client. And, um, he pulled me to the side. He said, man, what you doing out here? So I told him, I said, I'm handling my business. <laughs> he right. told me, what you mean you handling your business? I said, I'm being a man, something that you couldn't teach me. Oh, wow. To be so, at that particular time, we pretty much um, didn't see either. I didn't look at him as being my father. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't look at him. I, I was my own man. I feel like, you know, I got to the point that I had to do the things that I needed to do in order to survive. Mm -hmm. I couldn't ask my mother, you know, for no money, for no tennis shoes or no sweatsuit sure. or the, mm -hmm. you know, my clothes to go to school. So, you know, she was struggling. Um, and so at that particular point, you know, we didn't see eye to eye. We ended up meeting again. He had came, I think I was in Hancock County, Tennessee. He came to see me and at that point, I felt like we could reconcile our differences and we sit down and we talk for about an hour. And he had made a decision from that point that, you know, we would be friends. We would reestablish a bond that we never had. And from that point, you know, that's my best friend. You know, my father wow. is like my, I mean, I talk to him every day. Wow. I mean, this, this is like, we, like we cool that's my man okay. and the things that he's done and what inspired me let me say this what inspired me with his story because although he had his experiences with drugs and alcohol and incarceration when he made a decision to turn his life around and when i seen that he was dedicated and committed to you know, doing the right things in life, I feel empowered. Right. I feel like if Wonderful. he can do it, I can do it. And that's the impact that he had on me. So, you know, even though it started out a little rocky, you know, we end up. You guys ended up. Yeah, good. Getting it together. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So he is still with us. He's not incarcerated now? No, nah, he's not incarcerated. Actually, sure. he he speaks all around the world, you know, about the parallels of chess, life and chess. Okay. And, you know, it's in this book. You know, when you read this book, you'll see some of the things. And he's also on YouTube on TED Talk. And he got like 17,000 views on TED Talk. You know, he's a phenomenal guy, man. Wonderful. You know, he's 71. I know he don't want me to tell people his age, <laughs> but he's 71 years old. This guy plays tennis like four oh, or five wow. times a week. He can do like a hundred push-ups straight. You know, he's, he, he tells me all the time he does things that's vital to his title, <laughs> you know, and he's posing to be chosen, you know, oh, so goodness. yeah, he's a, he's <laughs> a phenomenal guy. He, I mean, he awesome. is the message that he bring. When you see him, you know, he's a, he, he has a great spirit, a loving guy, and he teach children. He just, he, he have a passion to teach children you know, the life of chess and always think before you move. And right. that's what, you know, he instilled within me. And that's why I chose to do the same thing using the Wonderful. platform and not only chess, but barber. Perfect. 
and that's that's a good segue. So what we're going to do right now, um, <coughs> when we come back, we're going to take a we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get into the community service that Marco mm -hmm. is now uh, um, that he has established in the local community, as well as what his dad has established. But I want you guys to remember, this is a participatory uh, show. So I'd like for you guys to call in if you have any questions for either myself or Marco. You can call in, call us at 240-719-2560. Or you can email me at winwithcurtis at gmail.com. Uh, and again, uh, sponsors and the sponsorship and support is always welcome. You can call into the show or you can email me at any time. And we will be right back back. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 
Once again, my name is Curtis Austin. I am the host of We Win with Curtis, and I have my good friend Marco Price Bay on the uh, on the show with me today. And this last half of the uh, of the show today, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, what Marco is doing now in the community to to give back. And based on everything that he has learned from his trials, his experiences uh, as a youth to today. Um, what he's doing now to try to uh, help others out of their situations. And once again, it all kind of boils down to that decision making and those choices that people make. So, uh, Marco, if you will, uh, I understand that while you, you know, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, you had learned to cut hair. Right. Uh, now, in the book, I know that you have a, um, a barbering uh, mentorship program. A barbering academy. Academy, okay. Yeah, I teach barbering at um, a detention facility down in Lowell, Maryland. And um, not only is it barbering, but I teach life skills. Character building, you know, attitude adjustment, professional image, so forth and so on. I think we have a call. Caller come in. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Turn, turn your radio radio down, please. Hello. Hello. Will you turn your radio down, please? You're live on the air with In the End We Win with Curtis. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello? Hey, can you turn your radio down for us, please? Are you there, caller? Hello? Yes, can you hear us? Turn your radio down, sir. Can we, uh, cool. Okay, so, um, Marco, uh, from the book, you mentioned that you have a barbering academy, and you were explaining exactly what you do. Right. Um, I have a barber academy called Fresh Start Barber Academy. I'm at local. I'm at Lowell, Lowell Merlin Detention Facility at New Beginnings. Okay. And I teach youth not only barbering but life skills, character building. Wonderful. You know, uh, professional image, attitude adjustment you know, so forth and so on to build the person up because I'm not only a barber instructor, but I'm a human capital development specialist. Human capital development specialist. That's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's based on, you know, I building the, the person up more so than building okay. the skill. Great. I think we have our caller back on the line. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. You're live on the air. In the end, we win with Curtis. All right, we'll do that. So, um, human capital development specialist. specialist. In Laban's term, a life coach. Okay. You know, I'm a life coach. And pretty much. Hello? Hello? Let's hold off on him. So you're a life coach? Yeah, I'm a life coach. And I would say a life coach because you know, I believe in winning. Mm -hmm. And I believe in seeing the potential that that's within a person. I like to reach down in them and bring that potential out. Okay. You know, regardless of where they came from or whatever circumstances that, that they're dealing with, I believe that they can win. And Absolutely. I, and I give them the motivation, the <laughs> inspiration. I encourage them. Right. And I'm there with them, you know. Right. Even when they fall, I'm like, man, get back up. You're going to make mistakes, you know. So let's continue to, you know, move forward. And that's, to me, giving these youngers confidence, yes. giving them encouragement. Right. You know, giving them a hug, you know. Right. Because they never had, a lot of them, like I said, never had 
father figures. They never had big brothers. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I give them that model. And I'm the message that I bring. I don't hey, contradict my character based on, you know. We got another caller. Good evening. Hello, this is Curtis. You're on the air. We're having some technical difficulties. Can you hear me? Turn your radio down, please. Yeah. Have some technical difficulties, but we good. Right, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're here. We got the main players here. Mm-hmm. So, so you bring it, you're, you're trying to bring the best out, and it's interesting that you said you tell them that we win in the end, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's hence the uh, the show title. Right. And and I agree. I believe the same thing because I've had I too have had some challenges in my past, but with some tweaking of my thoughts, mm -hmm. um, in the end, you know, I, I'm winning now, yeah. if you will, right? So, um, so is are you, is your academy just in that Laurel facility, or are you doing anything? here uh, closer to the D.C. metropolitan area? Well, I'm mobile, and a lot of times what I do is the young guys that come home from that uh, detention facility, mm -hmm. I get them with me to go around the homeless shelters and, you know, group homes and things of that nature to sure. cut ahead, show them, you know, how to give back into their community. Okay. And so, you know, for the most part, you know, right now what I'm doing I'm just like guys that come home, been incarcerated for a while. I help them make that transition. Sure. You know, they got my number. My number stays the same all the time. And pretty much they just need the kind of guidance and the example to look at me and say, you know, if Marco can do it, I can do it. <laughs> you know, because right. they know my story. Right, right, you know, right. I, I, don't, I don't fake my story. I don't wear my period of incarceration as a badge of honor, but I let them know that throughout my trials and tribulations and things that I've been through, mm -hmm. that you can overcome. Definitely. If you change your thought, you right. can change your life. That paradigm it's just that It's just that simple. Right. Is it, do it get rough? Yes, it get rough. Sure. You know, do you have your ups and downs? You have your times? But that's when you go back to that foundation that that's established and you build on that foundation right. and you continue to work towards, you know, your goals and your dreams and get around guys that will support you. Sure. You know, you don't get around Correct. guys that talk negativity or talk that's about, right. you know, man, let me give you this pack. You can go out there and make some real quick money. Now we don't get mm -hmm. around that. And so, right. you know, like I said earlier, I live by principles and the principles that I live by, I don't compromise. Wonderful. Right. You know, that's I'm, awesome. I stand alone, you know. Right. And, and, that's, and that's commendable. And that's mm -hmm. to be commended because I think a lot of people are looking for um, that respect, but they're looking for it in the wrong ways. They think that they have to be someone else or do something, do what um, the crowd is doing mm -hmm. to feel accepted. But to have that confidence to uh, create and, and, and walk your own path mm -hmm. is is awesome, man. That's that's what a lot of us need out here. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that's, what, for the most part, that's what it come down to you being consistent mm -hmm. in your everyday life, your words, your actions, and your deeds. You being consistent with that. Sure. People ain't going to see no, you know, I'm not swerving. I'm consistent with this. And, you know, like I said, it's not about how much money that you have. It ain't about how many material you know, attainments or acquisitions that you have obtained. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys, they think that they net worth is equated with their self-worth. Oh, and wow. so they feel okay. like, if I got this, and then I'm this. Right, right, right. right but, you right. know, you have a lot of guys that, that, you know, they 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 a lot of flash, they're, but they lack substance. Right, they're flimsy. Yeah, they're flimsy. you know what I'm right. saying? And so what's really needed is to show the true character of manhood. Right. You know, when you're showing the true character of what man really is, then it separates you from the people that's faking. Right. You know, a lot of guys out here, you know, that's really representing, you know, what I'm doing. And I walk on the shoulders of a lot of guys that done paved the way. You know, you got a lot of guys in D.C. that's really doing it. You know, you got guys like 
Tony Lewis Jr. You got organizations like um, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Cease Fire, Don't Smoke the Brothers. You oh, got wow. Tyrone Parker in them with Alliance Concerned Men and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, family and friends of incarcerated people. I mean, you got a lot of organizations with some real men that's representing. Wonderful. And a lot of them doing it without no money. Right. Oh, wow. They okay. doing it without no money. Right. Because they Commitment. have a passion. Right. You know, that, 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 that spirit of giving back to their people. Because if we don't do it, who will? Right. You know, if we don't get out there and represent for our youngest, then who will? Yeah, they don't have no fathers, but you can be that figure. You can exactly. be that example. You can be the person that they can look up to. You right. Know? You might be the only book that they ever read. Sure. sure. Just being a message. Right. That you bring in. So that's what, that's to me, that's most important. You know, I've impacted and empowered a lot of people just keeping it real. Right. You know, just that, just that alone and being able to conversate with them and give them, like I said, the encouragement and the motivation and the inspiration. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I'm not talking to them, I'm talking with them because I be needing it. Right. Okay. I need to stay motivated. Sure. Because sometimes it get rough. Right. And so for Even the most for you, part, that's yeah, right. you know, you you just got to be the message that you bring in, like, and be passionate right. about it. Be real they'll, about they'll be able to see through it if you're fake. You're gonna see straight through. Right. Right. You know, they 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 know who fluffing. You know, they know that who, who fake. <laughs> you know, right. so you can't get past these youngers out here. But you got to be real and you got to really be sincere. Right. So that barbering um, uh, skill that you picked up, mm -hmm. I understand that your father was was he the youngest. Yeah, he's a he's a master, master barber, barber yeah. in the district. He was the youngest at 17 years old in Spangon. I think it's Spangon High School back then in I think the early 60s. Oh wow! Okay. Yep, a Spangon High School. Is that where you got the idea to become a barber at some point? Yeah, I was fascinated back then. What fascinated me with barbers back then because they their character. Mm -hmm. You know, the professional courage, the professional image. You know, barbers had their barber jackets on. They wore the dress shoes, the slip-ons, <laughs> the crocodiles, right. and the gators with slacks. <laughs> right. You know, they was real, you know, men of, you know, intelligence and courage. And they can give right. you good conversation. Right. They're not like the youngest that be in the barbershop, man, with the dreads and the pants hanging oh, right. down. Right. And so, you know, that's what captivated me then. When I was young, because I used to clean, I used to sweep the barbershop, okay. know, clean it up, you know, mm -hmm. clean the hip off the barbershop floor. So when I see these guys coming, I'd be like, God, these guys stay sharp. They cars, they had nice cars. And so I said, I want me to be, I want to be a barber when I grow up. Oh yeah, you know, I used to clean all the blades. Early out. influence. Yeah, early influence. And so from that, really, barbering saved my life. Right. So now we know about the book. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I apologize for not having the uh, the actual movie cover, um, Life of a King, starring Cuba Gooding Jr., who plays your father in the movie. How did that movie come about? Was 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 did the book come first, or or was the movie first? The movie came first, and the way the movie came about, I believe it was some students at a university that was given an assignment to go out and find a popular figure in D.C. that was giving back to the community. Okay. And it, I, I believe it was about 15 to 20 people that they had to go out and choose from. Out of the 20 people, they chose my father. Oh, wow. Because my father, he's been teaching chess for over, mm, I believe, 30 years. Okay. And um, he's been teaching the children, the inner city youth, you know, the game of chess, and not only have you been teaching them chess, the game of chess, but he's teaching them how to make better decisions in life. Say One of the concepts mm -hmm. and models that he used is to always think before you move. Okay. And that model, that concept, have changed a lot of young guys' life and saved a lot of lives. Wonderful. You know, he had at elementary school, and you'll see in the movie that he took, you know, some 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 young, he took a group of youngest to like, I believe, three or four 
uh, city championships. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, you know, he's been doing a lot of things. He's down in North Carolina. He has the Big Chair Chess Club in North Carolina now. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So does he still have a chapter here in the area, or is it all based down in North Carolina now? It's down in North Carolina now. He pretty much transitioned down North Carolina because he wanted to, you know, get some further ground. But he comes back from time to time to do speaking engagements and okay. things of that nature and, and, you know, to teach chess as well. So have you seen a lot of um, young men, women, mm -hmm. coming through the chess academy? Yeah, you have a lot of, a lot, because they're curious about the game. A lot of people are curious. They really want to know, you know, what's intriguing about chess and the things that they can learn from it. They want to sit down and get the dynamics of it. And um, one of the things that he teach them, because like I said, he, he pretty much used chess in life as a, a parallel okay and he showed them how both you know are correlated okay to each other so you know once he teach them that and start like showing them different combinations on the chessboard you know he's not he's a chess man he's not one of the greatest chess players okay on board but off board he's master he's oh, a yeah. grand master <laughs> off board okay and his grand mastership come from his level of intelligence knowing that he is the king okay you know wow okay. he is the king and that's why you got this book from pawns of kings life of a king you know my father is a king right he told me man you're a king right you got to think like a king you, know you got to think great right be great gotcha mm -hmm. i think we have a caller on the on the phone caller are you there good evening hello Good evening, caller. Hello, you're on the air. All right, I think we might before go call. <coughs> okay, so um, so your father, ha so you have the barbering academy, and your father has the big chair chess club. Right. And you you both have come up with these. Uh, mentorship, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, 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 programs because of your previous experience and your, your, your situation, the situation that you had gone through and you wanted to just make a difference in the community. Is that right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We use chess and barbering pretty much as a platform to, to help. Okay. You know, I mean, some people would never really learn how to play chess. Some I people sure don't. I never learned I how to cut hair. You know, I have a right. lot of people that came through, you know, my academy, and I didn't taught at Bennett Career. I didn't taught at um, UDC Community College. I had a contract with them, Sasha Bruce, mm. Youth Help. And a lot of people might not gravitate towards, you know, uh, the actual game of chess or learn the vocation of barbering. Sure. But... My concept is to, you know, instill within them that whatever you do, mm -hmm. whatever you decide to do, you know, you go at it with confidence. You go at it with belief and faith in yourself. Right. No matter what people think, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. about you, you know, you can succeed. Right. You okay. know, just, 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 just be prepared. Prepare yourself. Because when preparation meets opportunity, success is guaranteed. Okay. You can't lose. Right. Yeah, it's going to be hard. But my thing is to r really get people to understand that within them, you know, is the seed of perfect development that gives them unlimited capacities for progress. You know, you got a mm. spirit that's within you that that's indomitable, that can't be stopped. Come on, man. You, you know, your, 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 your willpower, your determination, this thing is real. What I'm talking <laughs> about, I mean, you, you, you seeing right. a living manifestation of now what God know. can do with you. Right. You right. know, I can sit up here and try to toot my own horn, but it ain't me. Right, right. You know, it's, it said, greater is he that's in me, he, that's, that's he that's in the he world. That's in the and world. so right. I don't want people to get caught up and thinking that, you know, I'm caught up into some sort of vanity or, you know, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I ain't like that. Right, right, You know, right. I ain't like that. I, I, used don't, to, I don't know you to be that way. Right. Yeah, I ain't, I used to think that I was all of it, but 
<laughs> I found out that I wasn't. All right. I'm all right. <laughs> but I I ain't where I want to be, you know, but I ain't where I used to be. Right, right. So I still have room for improvement. Right. And, uh, you know, making great strides and being with a guy like you. Come on, man. You know. We're we doing this thing together. I can't do nothing but win. <laughs> That's right. So listen, I um, now you're married. Yes. How long have you been married? How long have you been married? I've been married for two years to my childhood sweetheart. Okay. You know, Pamela Price. Um, hey, been knowing her since I was 12. No, she was 12. I was 13. Uh-oh, praying on the young. Nah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know how Stay fate will have it. You know, as time went on, we, you know, separated, and she went her way. I went my way. Mm -hmm. She she took a spiritual path. Right. I took the street path. And as God will have it, we came, you know, back. Mm. Full circle. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I would call her my life partner. Wonderful. You know, she's my life partner. You know, she helps me to stay grounded. And um, because I can be a mess, you know. I can be a mess, you know. <laughs> Those who know me, you know, know that I can be a mess. And, you know, I, I, I mean, as a man, I don't think that you are complete until you have, you know, your other half. Hence you know? my producer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And that's awesome, man, because, you know, now you, you grew up, you went through everything that you went through, mm -hmm. incarceration and the, 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 the capacity or the process to change your, your thoughts. And then, because I can tell you what my wife, did for me was mm -hmm. when I met her, mm -hmm. she was, um, she didn't know how she had affected me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking to get married, but I met her at 28. I was saying I wasn't going to get married until 35 mm -hmm. or so. But um, while we were dating, she cut me off. Mm -hmm. No more sex. What? <laughs> <laughs> but what it did for me was, right. It squared me up, man, mm -hmm. and it really made me, mm -hmm. you know, um, look at her integrity. Mm -hmm. Because prior to that night when she came to the house and said that, we were, right? But then out of the blue, she was just like, I'm done. You're either going to, you're mm -hmm. going with me mm -hmm. or I'll see you later. I, you know, I'll catch you later. Mm -hmm. And that was a sign of someone with high character. Right integrity mm -hmm. and so on so i understand that piece that you that you're talking about right. um and i know pam mm -hmm. and, and i know exactly what you're talking about in fact at some point i'd like to have perhaps you both on because i know she's doing some things as well in mm -hmm. the community and everything about this show is just that it's um to bring instill enlighten and enrich and inform people about mm -hmm. real people doing real things with real stories and um <clears throat> That that's that's just awesome. So two years, and everything is going great. No, no uh, thoughts of hanging back out with the guys that you was hanging no, with. No, that, that 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 was never with me. I don't do no whole lot of hanging out with no whole lot of guys. I have always been my own man. I got a few selective, you know, guys that I do, and you can count them on one hand. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> and it's some good guys, some good guys of you know character, and morals, and principles, and values. Or in place. Or in mm -hmm. place, and, you know, we got a brotherhood. It's a, it's a brotherhood, and, you know, for the most part, you know, my thing is to be around people that's going to constantly help push you, you know, to go to that next level. When you're seeing them doing the things that they're doing, and they're mastering their craft, and they're doing things, that, that, that helps me to stay focused because I know that, you know, it's all about pretty much going to the next level. That's awesome. That's awesome. So where do you see yourself, uh, Marco, in three, five, ten years? I see myself as a multi-millionaire. Hey, Amen. Yeah, I see myself as a multi. I think rich. You know, I'm, 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 I'm rich, and not more so just to be, you know, saying that I got all this, but I want to really be able to help people and empower them. Okay. In a different kind of way because I got I got guys that teach CDL my man 
Dan Henderson Neal. He's a great CDL trainer. I got guys that know how to cut hair way better than me. Mm -hmm. You know, guys that, you know, like Brother Martin DeVoyle. I got guys that have different trades and skills that if we incorporate them and we get the night the right funding mm -hmm. behind them, and we can go out and help. Mm -hmm. We can go out and help and mobilize and help our people because mm -hmm. a lot of these youngers, they're not going mm -hmm. outside of their neighborhoods. You got to go to That's them. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So a lot of my work, I go to the neighborhoods. I go up in Woodland Terrace. Mm -hmm. I go to Clay Terrace. I had a bar program mm -hmm. in Clay mm -hmm. Terrace, mm -hmm. you know, because I don't fit nothing, you know, because I, I was one of them. I go to different communities and cut hair for free. I, I might cut like 50 heads mm -hmm. back to school or whatever. So, you know, you have to... Stay around people that's going to constantly motivate and encourage you to be the best that you can be and continue to grow. Right. Continue to, you know, stay educated. Education is the key. Sure. You know. I agree with that. And so as long as you're being educated and you're reading and you're listening to motivational tapes and videos and doing the things, I do this thing, I, I do this consistently, mm -hmm. you know. And this this networking, mm -hmm. you know, vibing off of good energy. Right. You know, these are things that we need. You know, we need to be empowered. We need to be impacted. A lot of people out there are struggling. Right. But they're making great strides at the same time. Right. 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 Because they, a lot of people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sure. But you, they just gotta, uh, like the word said says, um, you gotta be renewed by the transforming of your mind. That's right. You know, so you got to. Take that time out every day, you know, in silence, without your cell phone, without, you know, social media, mm -hmm. then take some time out to get with your creator, you mm -hmm. know, the God of your understanding, whatever, or mm -hmm. whoever he is. And that's one of the things that has helped me to get to the point where I'm at, and I know it's going to help me to get to that next level. I can't do nothing without, you know, my high power. That's wonderful. So we've got a couple of more minutes. So if someone wants, if, if someone that was listening and watching wanted to um, contribute to your barbering academy mm -hmm. or the uh, chess club, how can they do that? They can um, contact me. You, you can call me on my t uh, my uh, cell phone, 202-550-1835. You can contact me on my Gmail, which is mpricebay. At gmail.com. That's his M Price B E Y at gmail.com. You can go to my Instagram page, which is M Price Bay, my uh, Facebook page, which is Marco Price Bay. Just contact me, inbox me. You know, you need me to come out and speak to some youngins. You need me to come out and speak with anybody that needs some help. Mm -hmm. You know, give me a call and I'm available. Wonderful. So um, if, you, if you're interested in, in uh, contacting us right now, we've got a couple of more minutes before we sign off. 240-719-2560 is the phone number to reach us right now. We'll get you live on the air. We've got about less than five minutes left. Um, it was a great show. This is my inaugural show, and I had a, a, a great uh, friend on the show. I think it went well. Um, you know, my whole thing is to not just promote the show itself, mm -hmm. but everyone that comes on to the show, I want to give them an opportunity to um, have, you know, uh, just just be impacted by the, the mm -hmm. listeners and the viewers. So if someone wanted to reach out to you, man, I, I, I hope that they do. Mm -hmm. um, based on what you've said today, they'll, they'll know where you came from. They'll know your integrity. They'll know where you are now, and they mm -hmm. know what you're doing. So your, your uh, <coughs> academy, your barbering academy would be a good one them to kind of team up and or partner with. Now, you okay. were doing something with uh, Contemporary Family Services in the yeah. city, too, right? Are yeah. you still doing that? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still with Contemporary, Contemporary Family Services, but at this particular time, at this present time, we don't have funding for barber or okay. cosmetology, but I'm still with them as well. Um, however, if anybody need a barbering program, in their school, and they have a facility, or wherever you at, it can be in a basement. <laughs> right. I come down there and teach. Right. You know, it's about teaching the unteachable and reaching the unreachable. 
Right. And I always think before you move. Curtis, man, thank you. And much success. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Must Appreciate success. it. We're going to do this success. thing together. Oh, yeah. It's interesting. We just had breakfast uh, maybe a month and a half ago, and we were talking about some other things. So That's this right. kind of just fell right into place, man, since then. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I think it was, uh, I think this was a great show. Yeah. I got another book coming out. It's, it's, it's a little pamphlet, and it's called um, seven, seven Keys on How to Free Yourself from Mental and Physical Slavery. Oh yeah, yeah. I got another book that's coming out pretty soon. I haven't. You didn't um, bring us a sample. No, not yet because I don't want to <laughs> prematurely, you know, okay. bring it out. But uh, I just wanted to, you know, let you know that. Okay. So in the near future, once I get everything pretty much situated, I definitely right. be coming back through. And it talks about. Oh, for sure, man. Doors are always open, and you know, I'm a supporter. My wife and I, we support, man. So you, yeah, yeah, go get the book. Yeah. For yeah. Pawns of Kings, look at the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, Life of a King. It's on Netflix, starring Cuban Gooden Jr. Yeah. And just like I said, just, you know, give me a shout out. You know, show me some love. If you want me to come and holler some youngins or holler some grown folks, some adults <laughs> that need That's some right. help. That's you right. Know, I'm and here. So we're going to wrap up. And if you wanted to reach me, you can reach me via email at <clears throat> winwithcurtis at gmail.com. Or you can call into the show, 240-719-2560. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. This is just the first. It's going to get better each and every week. So I encourage you all to uh, hang out with me every Monday night, 815 to 915. I, I encourage you all to be blessed and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Salute. Oh, yeah.